Yeah. You talking about that? So we will open the planning board meeting for mm -hmm. June 6th. It's being conducted in a hybrid manner pursuant to the general laws. We are recording and we'll post it online. Anybody else can record it? That is fine. You just need to let us know. Anyone? Okay. 7 o'clock p.m. Town Planners Reports. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Just a few items to share with the board since the last meeting. Um, all right, first thing I'll mention is that uh, a gentleman by the name of Ahmed came by the office yesterday uh, inquiring about the former Pioneer Dairy uh, property, 214 Beating Hills Road. Yeah. Uh, he operates uh, a used car business out of uh, West Springfield. Observed that the, um, I'm sorry, the name is escaping me. I forget if it's Eastern and Northern uh, Auto Auction out of uh, Windsor, Connecticut, had changed hands over to the Copart uh, Corporation, which I think specializes in um, salvage and other related vehicles. So that, well, that auction opportunity had changed for their business. So part of his inquiry uh, related to holding automobile auctions from, from that site. Uh, briefly scratching the surface, uh, it appears that that is simply uh, another arm of used car sales and that license that goes uh, with it. I don't think we have any ability to dictate the manner in which uh, vehicles sold, whether it's online or, or otherwise. Um, some specifics of that conversation revolved around him focusing his efforts just on what we'll call the developed portion, the corner of the property, um, which is mostly zoned business. Um, with the exception of, we'll call it the most northern part, which does include some of the, uh, the storage building at the rear. Can you uh, speak a little bit more? Sure thing. Uh, the, he also talked about, uh, if you will, renovating that rear structure, keeping a portion of the main structure um, as their operations center, um, and asked that I share some of the opportunities and restrictions under that business zone with him uh, via email. That's yet to have uh, come to a point of completion, mm -hmm. but I want to let you know that uh, I'm composing that correspondence uh, and completing the research related to that. It's what, 500 feet, right? That it goes back? For the zone? For the zone. I think, so you asked an interesting question uh, about it. In the, that, it's split along the frontage. Right. So de according to, well, depending on how and if the parcel is sold oh, and split. splits off that portion, That's right. That's right. then presumably the entirety of that corner would be right. uh, okay. considered business. That's right. I forgot about that. That's okay. Without the mapping in front of us, uh, yeah. uh, it's a shot in the dark. So the house there is in, would be business still? The house on the corner? The house on the corner is currently shown as part of the business oh, parcel well, yeah. as well. Uh, the cursory discussion that we had revolved on the idea of him splitting off that yeah. residence um, from the remainder of the property. That was over the aquifer too, isn't it? I would presume so, but I honestly, have, I didn't click that fancy button when I uh, looked at the yeah. morning out there. I think it is, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so the second uh, conversation I had, I uh, spoke with Bruce Fleming last week. He's over on Will Palmer. They were doing some work over with the, uh, around the stormwater basin uh, for Laurel Ridge. Um, and we looked at, uh, excuse me, the, the original decision for that flexible residential subdivision noting that there needed to be a, a maintained um, and by maintained meaning keep in place a vegetative buffer around the perimeter of the subdivision um, so we talked a little bit about what's necessary under um, long-term operations maintenance plans for stormwater uh, basins and what you should expect to see out there lastly uh, i on behalf of the planning board received uh, an email from select board member jason Perron. Uh, noting that at the, the annual town meeting, uh, the vote uh, uh, was was cast and uh, the warrant article approved to allow for retail um, uh, marijuana sale 
in Southwick. We understand that there are elements within our um, medical and retail, excuse me, medical and recreational uh, marijuana bylaw that need to be modified uh, accordingly. So the request was for the planning board to initiate the process uh, to take a closer look um, at modifying that bylaw. Quick scratch of the surface. We know that there's some language in there that talks specifically about prohibiting retail sale. That's an obvious and an easy grab for something that uh, would like to change, as well as adding that to all the allowed uses. Um, and then from a high level, um, thinking about whether or not there's uh, any further discussion about the appropriate location for retail facilities. Uh, understanding um, that this was a relatively recent effort um, by the planning board to compose the bylaw as we see it today. Uh, but anyways, uh, so coming out of that, um, I'm happy to entertain some more discussion, perhaps on a routine business, about uh, the board's inclination uh, about how to proceed um, and uh, you know, whether or not we have enough knowledge of the topic uh, to uh, initiate discussion at the planning board level uh, moving forward. And that's all I have for John Plains report this week. All right, and on that, I would say let's figure out. Um, may want to just reach out to see if there's been discussion about a special town meeting. Um, so we have some kind of time frame, mm -hmm. and then we can kind of talk about when to deal with that. Open that. Um, so yeah, why don't you do that, and then we can kind of talk about it at the next meeting. As far as the time, it certainly doesn't have to be done before the next meeting. So right. Okay. Okay. Happy to get that answer. All right. I have to see so I can hear. <laughs> well, now I've got a direct shot to you. I confused you my hearing aid, so I actually read your face as I'm hearing you. <laughs> All right. 7 10 p.m. 157 Feeding Hills Road continued public hearing. Okay. Let's. We received a letter, amongst several others, we did receive a couple of letters in support of the proposal, but most recently I received a letter requesting to withdraw the application without prejudice from consideration at this time. Okay. Kathy, for I'm sorry. The application is part of, of the part, yeah. part of three for the special permit amendment and uh, the well associated matters case. for the wellhead floodplain and so on and so forth. Uh, we did receive several points of clarification from town council uh, following the last meeting. One of them uh, reaffirming Mr. Doherty's interpretation um, of the bylaw and that the, the planning board could allow certain changes and then it says notwithstanding that opportunity to um to permit those changes you can't do it if it goes beyond the footprint of the use or structure of the property uh the second clarification was that um consideration of use at those elf buildings as an accessory function to the dining component uh, so whether uh, they would be used as you know, um, space for rent uh, for private functions uh, or what have you uh, was still even with trading we'll call it seating capacity amongst them um, an alteration or let's say a, a fundamental component of the restaurant function at the property and therefore uh, town council did not uh, see a way through to permitting uh, that proposal you know, as it was submitted. Was there any discussion about the ADA applies to some that somebody spoke about last week? I didn't get there. Through through ancillary discussions with uh, the building department, it's understood that that's going to be a factor. Um, so, and the presumption is that this withdrawal this time will further down the road 
will come back for consideration after a number of maps have been cleaned up. Mm -hmm. But that is a conjecture from where I said. All right. Do I hear a motion to um, accept the withdrawal of the application? So moved. I hear a second. Second. We will call vote. Mike Doherty, aye. Dave Bina, aye. Dick Bussinger, aye. Dave Sutton, aye. Jessica Thornton, aye. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it may, and it may be there's, I don't know if it's fans or what that's causing a little bit today. So, um, so, um, the um, applicant has chosen to withdraw the application. Um, and um, I, my understanding is they still have to deal with conservation um, with some issues. So they're going to be in front of conservation dealing with some things. They have to address the um, American with Disabilities Act issues as far as access. Um, and I think ultimately they're, you know, the the way I think this probably needs to be done is um, for them, since the business has operated there for a long time, is to simply ask for a zone change for that area rather than having a residential zone with that business there. So that may be where they, it's, it's their decision. I don't know what they're going to do, but that's probably what they will choose to do if they want to continue using these, uh, these outfits. So. Um, it would give them more leeway in their ability to to run a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Those are those. Uh, conservation is a separate, completely separate issue. It doesn't depend on the zone. Doesn't matter for that. Yeah, so um, I can't, and anyone here can jump in, I can't think of any way parking would be impacted by the zone change. I don't think, I think it would just be exactly the same. Um, the biggest thing, right, is in a rest, if you're what's called a pre existing non conforming so you're, you're in this zone uh, doing something. You were there before the zoning came in. Uh, continue doing that. Um, you can't have an extended break um, or else you lose the ability to use it. But you also have some restrictions on what you can do. You've got to stay within that footprint. You can't, you can't, you know, even if you wanted to go out a, a little bit, you can't do it. Um, so, um, you know, there's that, that's the biggest issue. And it comes up a lot up by the by Congamon, right? It's a lot of stuff down there is pre-existing non-conforming. And so they really, like that one we had at uh, 141, the old Krabby Joe's, they can't expand that in any way, shape or form because of where it is, right? They have to stay right within that footprint. Um, so that's the biggest issue um, for the zone. But, you know, um, like I said, I, it, that, that's been a business for a long time. So I think that's probably the easiest way and, and most logical way to go about it. How do we get to this point of allowing building being built if we have to stay within the footprint? It, it, it's not, it's not our, I mean, well, let's put it this way. So you have some ability to put in, say, a shed or say, you know, whatever. I can't tell you what led to the permits being granted. You'd have to talk to the, the, the building inspector who issued the permits. That's not my, that's not my area. So, um, but whether they can do the use that they want is the purview of the planning board. So that's why they're here to, to, to get permission to do the use for it, right? Um, whether they built a, a, you know, some kind of gazebo or something, you know, something like that. And that's not what these are. I understand. I'm not saying they are, but if they built something like that, you know, if they're just going to not have a restaurant use for that, it's just going to be, you know, you can go sit out there or you can go do whatever. That's not really our issue, right? That's, you got to get your permits. You got to deal with conservation because of where it is, but it's not our issue. Our issue is simply about the use. 
group of the people that are here? How are we notified of the next step? So, um, uh, so a couple of things, right? I, um, you know, conservation, I don't know. I think that's still ongoing. Uh, it's not a new application that they're putting, right? It's still an ongoing. It, uh, it depends, right? They do have an open permit right now with conservation. If they submit a formal amendment, then okay. that gets treated the same as a, as we do to our special right. kind of an amendment here. We would receive notification for that. Okay. So there, so yeah, if they, um, what I would say is this. Um, so if they have to formally amend their permit for conservation, you'll get, abutters will get notice. I'm assuming you're an abutter, but so um, if they have to formally do it, but you know, it's not the worst thing in the world to sort of pay attention to the conservation uh, agendas. You can just go onto the calendar on the website and take a look at the agendas. Um, if they are gonna do a zone change, um, that's something that would, Come to us. Um, we give notice of it um, to the abutters, and it would also have to go to town meeting. So uh, there's two ask, two parts of that. Uh, we'd have to get approved town meeting and approved by the planning board. But you would get notice of the of the uh, planning board um, here on that as an abutter. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if it's your choice as to whether you want to, I believe they had permits for it. It's not, it's not the per so having a building permit is different than having a permit from us to use it in a certain manner, right? Those are two separate things. Building permit allows you to build it. A, a special permit, which is what we issue, allows you to use it in a certain manner for, you know, um, um, you know, like using a restaurant use, right? I mean, that's what they want there. So that would allow them to use those in that manner. That's different. So when you're doing the permitting, you don't even consider what that gazebo would be used for? It's not part of that? For the building permit? I don't believe, I haven't looked at a building permit application in a while, but I don't think you have to explain it in that great detail uh, on a building permit application. It's like if you had a, you know, you want to put a shed in your backyard, you're just writing the, you're writing the, uh, how big it is. Um, and I think you may have to show where it goes, but other than that, you're not doing much more. So doesn't that lead right up to this near the wetlands? Like they have a permit, this is what they're going to build, so it's near the wetlands? So Again, that's a, yeah, that's a separate issue, though. That's a conservation issue, right? And that's why they had to go to conservation. And my understanding is they got approvals from conservation to do what they needed to do. I, I you know, again, it's, I, I just, I haven't dug into this to know it in and out because it's not my, Area, right? It's well, conservation. I understand our concern is we can't get an answer. We can't get an answer from town hall. We can't get an answer online. So then when we come here and then you don't have an answer, like, <laughs> how do we get an answer? So um, if you want to ask about the permits, you go to the building department, um, which is right down the hall here. Um, ignore the construction and hopefully it will be gone soon. Um, if you want to um, um, ask about <laughs> conservation, you know, you can go to their meetings and ask about it. You can talk to Sabrina Pooler, who's the conservation coordinator. Is that her title? Mm -hmm. um, who's literally right next door here um, during the days. I don't know what her hours are, but uh, she's right next door here. So you can ask her about the conservation side of it. So those are the two other departments that I would reach out to if you want to know more about what they've done to get to here. And how those bathroom? Well, I, I mean, I can't tell you what they're going to do going forward, but you can ask them about about what the pro I mean, all they can tell you is what has happened so far, right? They can't tell you what's going to happen in the future, but they can tell you what has happened so far, and that'll guide you going forward. I would assume. Mike, if I can just yeah. add to that one second, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. uh, if I haven't uh, made it uh, abundantly clear, I, I'm available most easily 
leave a phone message. I just spent my time over at DPW. But I need these uh, questions about so called triaging the permitting process. I'm happy to share the information that I have. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I guess I just have one more question, and then I'll stop. <laughs> um, it's, it's just, it's hard for us because they went to the building department, got a permit to build a gazebo, and then they came to the planning board and they presented it as extra seating, right, somehow. Yep. It is nothing like the permit they asked for, and then they, you know, presented, well, it's not exactly what we originally had planned on, but this is what we want to use it for. And then it's been one thing after another, and now it's the Conservation Commission, and now it's, you know, the ADA compliance and all of these other things. So for us as residents, you know, to have to constantly go back and forth, and I want to know, like, do all of you, like, talk to the other departments? And does that weigh at all on your decision making when you hear that they didn't, they weren't entirely honest in all of this process? So, um, I mean, it depends. In my, in part of it is right. If you want to go out and build something in advance of getting a special permit for the use you want to use it for, you're taking on that risk, right? I mean, you're taking on the risk that you may not get that special permit, and that's what we're here for. We're here to hold the hearing to discuss these issues as to whether or not you get the special permit. Most people are not going to go out and build something before they get a special permit, right? Because they don't know whether they're going to get it or not. They've chosen to do it. You know, that's the risk they've taken on. They may very well, at least right now, they can't use it for the use they want because they don't have a special permit. So that's the way I see it. I, you know, it's sort of, we're going to hold our hearing and we're going to decide about the use. If they want to take on the risk of, you know, putting money into it before they get that, Special permit? That doesn't change the way I look at it. That's that's their issue. Going back to the statement where you said, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it up, but a non-conformal, non-compliant, and staying with inside of their footprint. They didn't build gazebos. They built buildings. And you said that, like Krabby Joe's, you wouldn't approve them to increase any any square footage in that situation. Correct. So and that's why they did wrong. How did we get to this point? Again, but that's yeah. why they're withdrawing it, right? Because okay. they were trying to. But should I mean, they be taken down at this point? They they built a building, and you it, said they can't. But again, they built a building with a permit that they had to build it. How, how it, did it's it get the, to that point? It, so, it, this is gonna. Uh, I hate to say that I'm not 100 percent positive. I'm not though. But I mean, I think even in a. When we're talking about uh, pre-existing non-conforming, um, the footprint issue that I was talking about is for the use, right? You can't take that building and extend it for the use that was there, right? That it's a it's a zoning issue. So the use um, as a restaurant. That correct. Square used as a restaurant. You can't increase the restaurant size. Okay. All right. But you can add a building to the grounds. For storage or whatever, what, it, well, whatever it is. Okay. Correct. Right? Then they gambled on whether or not they could use it as part of the restaurant, and they can't. The so the building is still there. I don't mind at all, Joe. <laughs> um, if there were probably three open style prison books, none of us would probably need to right now. That's what I think, and this is my opinion, my opinion everyone up there. Um, that's probably where you went into those three gazebos, right? Yeah. And, 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 and he's right. It's more to the COVID and everything else, right? And who's looking or not looking, it's more for the three buildings. Okay. And these folks are very, very right. Down by the lakes, um, the, the rail trail and rail trail there, mm -hmm. he tried to put a walk-in freezer in, got shut down because it was not within the footprint of the original restaurant. So this is the same scenario. Those were three storage sheds, probably shouldn't be there either. But they were permitted by the building inspector. They went in, they got a permit, and yes, in the application, it probably says gazebo, but you need to get a copy of that. Yeah. If they won't give it to you, go to the clerk's office and they give you the information act, pay three or four dollars, and you can get a copy. So I'm positive 
they have a permit for a casino. Absolutely. Whether it was right or wrong, who knows? But that's what they have. It has morphed into something bigger. And as soon as they said restaurant, it triggers these folks. And they already know, that's why they withdrew their application. They cannot expand past that footprint. And these boys know that, and the young lady online knows that. So that was going to be a no, and I'm speaking like them, because they're beyond that footprint. So they pulled the application, which calms these folks down, and times you down, they cannot use that, period. And if you drive by and see them having a party, you call the police, police come down, they make a notice of it, yada, yada, yada. It is what it is. So, so they're standing there with three empty buildings. That's what's going to be. So conservation did approve it. They did approve putting them in. Were they approved right or not? I don't know. But they did approve it. And yes, years ago, people tried to do stuff and they couldn't do it. Old owners, that's why I scaled all these years. Right? So it is what it is. And, and so building inspector did issue a permit. Absolutely, they were built with a permit. Conservation did approve something over there. So you know does, something over there? I, I don't have it in front of me. So okay. this is just Joe talking. All right? So simple. <laughs> something was approved that's there for a reason. Whether it's right or wrong, we don't know. Yeah, right, right. You can go see your building inspector, you can ask and get them that way. These guys are doing a great job. They, they, they pulled their paperwork for a reason, because they, because their lawyers and everyone else probably said, this ain't gonna work. And, and to go get zoning change is a very big step. It's gotta come to here, and that's for the town meeting. And folks, I'm sure go to every year and vote on your budgets and everything else, and I see you there, but I'm sure you're there. Now you have time to see So. That's another step for them to go through. So nothing is easy at this point. It's very simple. Nothing's easy. Go see the building inspector. Conservation young lady is very nice. She'll gladly talk to you. We'll give her your email. She will email you when anything comes up for that address. It's real simple. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. 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 So the zoning going So if you change, you're able to change the zoning, it may help as a restaurant, but as some people in that group up there already know, that we're probably going to consider spot zoning, which is illegal, and they don't do it at any time. But we're not going to go there because we're not attorneys. We just keep the audience. Right? right now, they have nice gazebos. Yeah, he's got nice nice gazebos. Very nice gazebos. That's all I have. Are we good now? storage buildings. Sorry, I'm sorry. They have really nice gazebos for storage buildings. That's what they have right now. The point is, they asked us to actually not include all But that's, that's between the building inspector. These folks have nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? Every, there's different departments, and as we call it in the big city, you stay in your lane. They're staying in their lane as far as planning goes, and as far as the business side goes. If they're bigger than they're supposed to be, that's your building inspector right over there. Can you talk to the inspector after the it, it, It's all good. Just we go see the building okay. inspector. <laughs> <laughs> <It's first thing. laughs> we needed to waste some time, so this is perfect. It actually got us to 7.30, which is what we needed to go. I don't shoot the messenger on. Joe, you've got, you got 159 Berkshire Ave. Did you kind of no. <laughs> I'll stay for the rest of the evening. That's the uh, maybe. Space so the yeah. <laughs> My question. Yeah. I just have one more yeah. thing to say. My husband's been living on, in that house for 50 years, and I've been living there 30. So it's not like we're just, you know, well, I'm here just to complain. No, understood. Understood. And, I, you know, I mean, again, that's why we have the public hearings, right? To listen to the abutters and, and what the proposal is and try to. And try to make a decision on that. Yeah, it doesn't. Then we get Joe. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so, um, we vote on that. Uh, the one thing I did neglect, I don't know why. Maybe. Um, maybe. I think I did. Uh, Seven oh five public comment. Um, does anybody have a comment <laughs> that they want to raise for the board tonight that is not on the agenda? You're off the hook, man. <laughs> okay. All right. Real quick. Seven thirty, right on time. Mike, do we need to make a motion? Uh, we did a motion we to um, yeah, yeah, accept, accept the draw. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. With the draw. Yep. Yeah. So, Thanks, Dick. Thank, thank you, folks. Have a good night, everyone. Um, One fifty nine Berkshire Avenue continued public hearing. <clears throat> Planning board members, what have? News to share if it's scanning to online at the moment. I don't see there. Um, I met so following uh, the last meeting, we had received some materials uh, that day uh, from Mr. Hale on behalf of the applicant. Randy and I went through, reviewed them, 
had some remaining concerns which generated an on-site visit um, between uh, myself uh, and Derek this morning. Uh, key items uh, that I put into my comment letter include uh, back in March, he talked about having some construction period surveys, some confirmatory survey efforts, looking at grades out there, so on and so forth, performing an additional test fit in the chosen location of the stormwater basin, so on and so forth. That took place today. All right. Um, so that component uh, was taking place on site. And also, Mr. Hale and I did a, a bit of a page turner uh, plan review uh, on this tailgate to look at the current um, and what is approaching to be the complete plan set uh, for this project. Uh, in doing so, there's a, a number of we'll cleanup items. Um, I do, we're accustomed to seeing plans that have, what we're going to call them the baseline specifications built into there. What you're interpreting, um, where the information came from, uh, who has final authority, and so on and so forth. Uh, his construction sequence, his baseline comments need to be folded into uh, the drawings. Some certain key elements that we discussed. He's talking about doing confirmatory survey to look at elevations out there. They'll appreciate that uh, he wants to do an as built, at least con uh, to confirm those elevations were installed appropriately uh, at the close of construction. Uh, and then in between here and there, um, as information uh, comes in, he may take his design from uphill to downhill and shift it according to an on site condition. Uh, related to basin volume as it currently exists, as related to some of the stormwater management features that are already in place and may be reconfigured for reuse. Uh, that all ties into uh, my comment response. Primarily important amongst my comments to Mr. Hale was that I needed a single, I should say, let's break it down to two fundamental documents. And we're familiar with this, right? You have one that's a stormwater port. That's all the data backing up your design. And then you have a set of plans, details, drawing specifications, and so on and so forth. So to make sure that was abundantly clear. Uh, we had a productive meeting today. And I let him know that I would speak about that meeting here. I asked Mr. Hale when we should expect to see the drawing revisions according to these comments and some of the suggestions that I shared as a courtesy from one professional to another. Uh, Mr. Hale indicated that he would have them submitted in time for the next planning board meeting. So that's June 25th. Um, but what, is that, did I say the wrong date? Yeah. Uh, okay, how about that last Tuesday in June? Um, <laughs> I thought I should have started, right? Uh, and confirming that he did not intend to say, oh, I'll have it submitted in time for DPW review, optimistically final review, um, uh, or what have you at that time. Uh, but then looking to the July meeting uh, for what we're going to call it hopeful and prospective action by the planning board on this application. If nothing else, that does open up the uh, end of summer and early fall for work to begin so that they have an opportunity to hit the fall seating window for the areas that they choose to either stabilize um, or open up depending on the um, sequence of construction um, and work accordingly. So is it less substantive at this point and more just incorporating into working documents, the substance that exists. It is more incorporating uh, the, the about level of detail that DPW and I expect to see on, on the plans so that, heaven forbid, um, whatever arrangement uh, sits, place goes up in smoke and you have to take these plans and hand them to a contractor, they can at least have the necessary guidance to construct the project. But there's no real issue about the substance of that detail. It's more just getting it incorporated so that there is a workable document at the end of the day. That's correct. As long as I'm not putting words in Randy Brown's mouth, um, 
I'll let you reserve the right to issue additional comments. I think we're reason he, he's the one who felt at first confident that we were approaching the finish line. Yeah, and I don't mean that there's not any substantive, but just for the most part, it's not substantive. It's more. I think that's fair. Okay. All right. So this is almost becoming a uh, annual motion here, but. Um, we should have you do it sometime. Um, <laughs> uh, do I hear a motion to continue 157 or 159 Berkshire Avenue to? Uh, I'm going to assume that's going to come. So we'll put it at 7:15 on June uh, 27th. Dave Spina, so moved. Richard Singer, second. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Michael Doherty, aye. Dave Spina, aye. Jacob Singer, aye. David Sutton, aye. Jessica Thor and I. That's all set. I can take the public comment. All right, let's look at some signs. Which one do we have in there first? Oh, one 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 Mr. Eggleston. Oh, actually, this is submitted by. No, this is for Dad. Stand so up there. Yep, this is a right. club. So this is. Um... Okay. Give me a second, Jessica, to put up online. So, as we mentioned uh, at the last planning board meeting, we have a number of this entities operating out of 141 Conron Road. At the current time, that includes the um, <coughs> Gem Marina and also, the restaurant component, which will be operated by Ford Dad Hub. Give me one moment to get this shared online. <coughs> okay. Fantastic. All right, let me share my notes on uh, this. We, the planning board uh, is tasked with providing an advisory recommendation to the building department, positive, positive commissions, or negative uh, for this proposal. Uh, right now, there are no existing signs on this facade. We allow 10% or 100 square feet, whichever is less for total signage. Wall signage is 10% of the subject facade or 50 square feet. Um, we've got on this specific facade, so up to what we see for the, um, the, the block entrance in this photograph, um, in excess of 180 square feet, 10% brings to 18 square feet, this is a 14 square foot sign. Uh, it is to be uh, mounted on brackets and extend only a small portion away from the wall, and the letters will be routed into um, into the sign material. Will it be lit? There, the application indicates the sign will not be lit. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right. Um, do I hear a uh, motion for a positive positive recommendation for the sign for Four Dads Pub at mm -hmm. 141 Conlon High Conlon Road? Dave Spina, so moved. Singer, second. Do a roll call vote. Uh, Michael Doherty, aye. Dave Spina, aye. Dick Singer, aye. David Sutton, aye. Hold on. Jessica's got to unmute. Jessica Thornton, aye. <laughs> Did I miss the sign? I was supposed to get a sign for nonverbal uh, communication. <laughs> All right. Uh, 202. College Highway. Uh, excuse me. May I ask a question on that four dads? You can, can. Yeah, Ken Eggleston, 141 Conway Road, four dads, pub. You you approved the one sign that we, we gave you there. Um, what, what can be done or what usage can be made on the roof mounted existing signs? I, I've read I've read the rules and whatever, and it, and, I, and, I, and it's it actually said somewhere no roof mounted ones were allowed. At some place that I read, and 
And I was also wondering, there was there used to be a sign in the back of the building toward the water. There's like like there was a sign for that we replaced the gem marina with. My suggestion would be to give John a call yep. later okay. this week and walk through the the you know the the exact measurements and right. what have you. I, and then I agree. Yeah. Well, the I measurements are not a not a problem. Not but I mean, what's allowed? But I understand. Problem. I do. So. Okay. This Thanks. I I only saw what you approved this afternoon an hour ago. And I was shocked that it didn't include more than that. Okay. Right. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. All right. Two away, College Highway. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me pull this up online as well. Yep. One moment. Let's pretend that I can talk and do this at the same time, but I think everyone will agree that's a poor choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe sitting here. Okay. You training? Yeah. Training for the planning board? Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Yeah. Associate member. There's no, yeah. there's no age requirement, right? Yeah. On associate member? Yeah. 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 So. Resident. <laughs> so nice to see that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so 208 College Highway is, we're looking at the uh, the Dunkin' Donuts restaurant at Gillette Corner. Um, I do have Jim Carlin uh, mine here, uh, who submitted uh, the sign application. Um, the proposal, uh, as modified through our discussions yesterday, is to replace the uh, facade signage that faces College Highway. So that's uh, on this diagram here, the rear elevation. Hey everybody, I've got stuff I can share. Beach. So, replacing the current uh, Dunkin' Donuts um, signage with uh, the Dunkin so the sign that we see here for the rear elevation. That's a new sign, it's a new model. And then, what's going to the right elevation? That's the side of the building that faces the interior of the site, or the north towards McDonald's, um, with the BD logo. Um, the configuration of this building is a little bit uh, atypical, right? And that the public face of the building really is the rear uh, of it. So uh, in walking through the accommodations under zoning for additional signage at, the, at a building entrance, uh, the specific language says one additional sign shall be allowed for each additional street level public entrance beyond the principal entrance utilized by the business establishment. Um, that's the best fit realistically for the DD sign. I move my cursor over because over towards the left side, the underneath, developed as close to the orange D right there, that is a building entrance um, with that jog in, in, in the uh, building. And also, you can see from the front, there is that uh, the people door. Uh, so I sat down with the building inspector to talk about this unique configuration of the building, make sure he was comfortable with the proposal uh, as I've described it to you. We're well under the, um, excuse me, the, the uh, permissible square footages for both of these signs. They are to be uh, LED lit um, from behind. Jim, did I miss anything in the description of those signs? Oh, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I mean, I think that was a no, but. <laughs> well, I'm gonna unmute myself. Uh, no, you described it perfectly. And so just to be clear again, once uh, for the board, it's just those two signs. Um, Correct. So the one labeled uh, front is not proposed and anything on the left elevation is not proposed. Correct. You see it there illuminated 24 7 just during working hours? I, gosh. I, I would say uh, 
during working hours, maybe maybe an hour after closing, so the employees can get out with some illumination in the parking lot. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the board? No. All right. Do I hear a motion to make a positive positive recommendation for the signs at 208 College Highway? So moved. Dave Bean. Do I hear a second? Take a single second. Do a roll call vote. Michael Doherty, aye. Dave Bean, aye. Take a single aye. David Sutton, aye. Jessica Thornton, aye. All right. Um, easy. That's science. Science. So now we have 520 College Highway. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. You Thank, you. Thank you. you. Contemplated mixed use development. I spoke with Trish Gendron this week about uh, the existing college. facilities at 520. Am I by chance looking at Trish? Hi, yes. Would you like to come up uh, to the table, sit down for an informal discussion? Sure. Uh, so this is Country Auto Sales. Yeah. Did I say the right uh, um, name there? Wonderful. Okay. Let me bring that up in GIS. I think that'll be helpful for everyone to see. Yeah. Just a moment, I go in. Share and here we go. Are you related to the Operation Agmore Feeding Hills? Are you related to that? That's what? Are you related to the Operation Feeding Hills or Agmore? Wasn't there a a dealership with the same name over there, or an auto parts store? Nope. No, okay. not related. No, attorney in Avon. Not. <laughs> That's a hair trigger on the Zoom here. One more try. Yeah. Oh, that's good enough for the moment. I think we'll see if the photo comes back. If the photo comes back, it's good enough. I know. I was trying to do that online too. Every time I try to expand it, it kind of disappeared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we're going to work with this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll let you go so far. Yeah. Uh, so, Trish, if you like, I'll, I'll start with a brief introduction to our discussion uh, and some a description of the surrounding uh, parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this parcel right here um, houses country auto sales. We see the display mm -hmm. uh, spaces up front um, and our parking um, dedicated to the business operation. So, this is their office, um, and uh, there, there is a small uh, garage, non repair garage. Um, attached to that office building. Um, at rear portions of the property, there um, is a residence. Um, now, according to my understanding and brief discussion with the building inspector, uh, use has lapsed um, at the residence. There hasn't been someone occupying it um, for quite a period of time, greater than two years is what it comes down to. Um, in our world, that's, that's the, the, the cutoff figure right there. Um, so the opportunity to continue what would, in the absence of a special permit, be a non-conforming use in a business restricted district um, has uh, become extinguished. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, all, both of these properties do access through um, uh, common access, mm -hmm. common driveway uh, that's shared with adjacent property. Um, Trish, you and I looked at this. I, was I say it was in the eighties when it was when the two when there was a plan submitted to split these two properties and an easement was put into place. Mm -hmm. I think I might be reasonably accurate right. by saying that. Um, so the discussion uh, came up, and the opportunity within the business restricted district to have a um, a mixed use opportunity at this uh, at this at this part so we get the business component on the front and to resume residential use 
of the building after uh, repairs and renovations, whatever right. it's it's to do renovating so. within the same footprint. Mm -hmm. My discussion with Trish then looked at uh, some of the site specific parameters because this would be treated essentially as a new uh, application mm -hmm. not to be brought forward. There are uh, what we call performance standards um, or design standards uh, that would have to be met and it would be a way of designating we call it the capacity of the site to adequately manage both of these uses uh, as well as provide for example adequate parking for mm -hmm. the business component um, the residential and not let either one obstruct uh, the other um, and we'll just say you know, the, the limitation of our, or rather one of the limits of our conversation is the proximity of these structures. Um, that is most likely a, a building in, in fire code uh, issue or, you, or, or at least concern. Maybe it needs to be uh, answered at an early point in the discussion, uh, but uh, I didn't see that as something that uh, would be specific to our concerns, although the compatibility of uses, I think, uh, is. So at that point in the conversation, um, uh, Trish asked if she could come in for an informal. Um, you know, one of the one of the questions that came up was, well, you know, the property, uh, while it hasn't been lived in for a period of time, it has been, um, it still stores residential materials, furniture, uh, and and the like. Um, from my desk, I didn't see that rising to the level of continued use over time, residential use. I think you do have to have that active occupancy. Um, but that's a point that I think we want to touch upon here with discussion and see if there's any initial feedback from uh, board members um, for this type of proposal. Mm -hmm. And there's a garage, you can't really see, but the other building behind that is a garage too. So there's kind of, you know, the house itself and then there's a garage so there's like a on that on the other side where the garage is. There's plenty of parking space too for people. You know, if the house were to be occupied, it's on the opposite side of from the car lot. It's on the back side. So there's a parking area there next to the garage. It's hard to see it in that picture, but um, it must and, be this building, that gray gray roof building. Uh, yes, sure that about. one. Yep. Okay. Yeah, okay. so that's the garage and it's next to the house itself. So it was basically, you know, we just wanted to renovate what was previously there um, and stay within the same footprint that's that's currently there. Would and we had actually last year, I believe it was last year that um, our contractor had, we had um, come up with a plan. We didn't even realize that there was going to be an issue at all because we just figured it was what it was. The, there was an elderly woman when we um, had purchased the property, there was an elderly woman who actually stayed and lived there beyond the time that we had purchased it. Um, and then, you know, um, once she left, we, our intentions were to renovate. We just didn't do it, you know, quick enough, obviously, but we weren't aware of that. So um, we had gone and we pretty much designed a or, you know, talk to a contractor and everything. And he was actually going to, he came forward to do the permits. And that's when we found out that all of a sudden, oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. The garage with the houses, that's <laughs> only for the houses, for, only for use of the people in the house, not for maintenance for the vehicles out front? No, but actually right now we just use the garage for storage. So, but they, we don't do any, um, any, auto body or any kind of anything like that on the property it's just sales that's it yeah so there's like no auto body itself or um you know oil changes or any kind of any of that kind of stuff it's just uh automobile sales in the front. Right. and it meets their requirements right that there's not the access is in the you said in the back or on the side. Well, I mean that is that would change with um, so right now actually there's accesses on both sides of the house, but we would probably make the front entrance be on the back side. Right. Yeah. You'd have where to. the driveway exactly. Yeah. So that would there's actually an entrance in the front and the back, but okay. it would be on the back side where the driveway is where the 
the um, garages on that side. Yeah, and suffice to say, just to exclude it from you know, discussions here, I think it's understood that I want to call it, there's going to be some uh, we'll call it dimensional confirmation. Uh, since we just, this does have to be treated as a brand new application, mm -hmm. or for example, you know, a parking space has to fit a certain dimensional requirement here in mm -hmm. Southbrook. You, you, in coordination with a consultant, would have to look and make sure that you can achieve some of these design standards. Um, related to the special permit request. Mm -hmm. Here's the only thing that I can see that we just, I think, need to clarify, which is, um, so the, 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 I think the intent of the bylaw with the addition of mixed use, at least the, my memory of it at least, was so that you could take an existing building and sort of, you know, use the second floor as an apartment or use the back of the building as an apartment or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Um, but it always sort of conceived of one <coughs> building. Mm -hmm. This is not that. And so, I mean, I don't otherwise see any issues. It, it's not, it's a building that you can't really see from college. <coughs> They basically all confined it's behind, behind it, yeah. That building, it's behind that building, um, and but I just we'd have to just check that I think with town council as far as you know the interpretation of that language and make sure that that which is sort of a pre-existing building on I mean you wouldn't be able to build that on a lot right now right you wouldn't right. be able to build those. <laughs> Commercial development, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's something that exists, and it, you know, but we so we didn't really think about it in passing the bylaw. We were thinking about using parts of a larger right. building. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that this idea is not prohibited from by the bylaw. So we'd have to check on that. Mm -hmm. That's the only issue that I see. I don't otherwise see a problem with it. I mean, it's sort of accomplishes, I think, the goal of what we were trying to do with the mixed use, which is utilizing what exists on College Highway for residential purposes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and adding that to it and allowing the businesses to do that if they wanted to. So, I mean, the idea is there. I just, I would want to make sure with the language here that I'm looking at that that's allowed. That's the only other thing. And obviously you still have, you know, um, fire code and other, you know, building issues to deal with, uh, but that's not our issue at least mm -hmm. right at this point so um so yeah we can check with Tom Cops, check with mark bagline and see i mean there's a under section d here mm -hmm. right seven uh, to maintain the intent uh any residential use is allowed as part mixed use development should be located above the floor street level of the building or in the first floor portions of the building that do not front the street or have access on the street front. I just right. want to make sure that we're, you know, the idea that there's two separate buildings that pre exist is is allowed. So I think my inclination is to say yes, but I don't know. I, I want to make sure. Mm -hmm. um, that certainly wasn't something that, at least thinking back, I didn't, I didn't have that in my mind that there was two existing buildings that would be dealing with. Mm -hmm. So, um, but other than that, I don't. It seems pretty straightforward as accomplishing what we're trying to accomplish there. So, any other board comments? Okay. All right, anything, John? No, but it certainly is, I will call it a, uh, I feel like it's a unique circumstance. There can't be a whole lot more uh, looking at this type of configuration for sure. I'm happy to follow up with you after I uh, get word back from town council okay. um, uh, with his uh, opinion. Making sure that before you proceed uh, mm -hmm. in any particular direction, uh, that this you know, meets the intent of the bylaw. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Thank, thank you for coming back. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, thank you. you. All right, Mr. Spina. Uh, let's see, Master Planning uh, Advisory Committee update. A couple things that have happened since our last meeting. We had a successful uh, participation in the Memorial Day Parade for the town. 
get to hand out some flyers to um, we're really targeting the uh, younger resident demographic try to get and then uh, engage make sure we hear from all of them um, we also had the first of our um, public engagement did we, did we hear you workshops had about 20 attendees to that Good. we have another one coming up on the 17th I get that right yep uh, I think it could be at the brass rail right um, I'm not gonna say the exact time it's in the evening um, at the brass rail um, and then the other thing we have coming on is the next actual meeting is going to be a working meeting um, the committee is paired off and each pair has a chapter that to to work on and, and uh, adjust the board. Town <laughs> town <laughs> town staff. Everybody has a chapter. Nobody gets on the lunch. Okay. <laughs> That's great. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Fantastic. Um, minutes for the advisory committee since there was a quorum of planning board members. Uh, did you get a chance to look at them? Good. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to approve uh, from the planning board side the minutes of the master plan advisory committee? May 4th, so May 4th, yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Do a roll call vote. Michael Doherty, aye. Dave Spina, aye. Dick Hudson, Ryan. Are you abstaining? Aye. Jessica Thornton, aye. You might have, uh, That's okay. If we haven't had a chance to look at them, uh, yeah, 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 at the next meeting, we can certainly get it. Unless. Hey, you can't say hey, right. Uh, Mrs. Thorne, you don't want to speak in my defense? Yeah, as the meeting minutes from 523 um, were reviewed on my end. And I found them all acceptable, except for um, Mr. Chamberlain's name was uh, misrecorded in the fourth paragraph under the 662A College Highway. He's listed as Chamberlain instead of Chamberlain, as he should be. And other than that, it's a okay with me. All right, we'll just kick it off for the next meeting and vote on it then. All right. Mr. Sutton. Make the motion to close the meeting. Dave, it's been a second. Yeah. Right. This is a this is amazing. Um, all right. The old days. We all beat the other team by two hours. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Roll reversal. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.